Hello everyone, how are we all doing? And welcome to your podcast hosted by yours truly, Pinkinia Aruana. And I never go alone, I have my co host. Hi, Nicole. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. So, today we're going to be talking about financial independence, and we're not going to be discussing this topic alone. We do have a guest in the house, and her name is Olivia. She has a, a background in accounting and internal auditing she is a mother of four she's married to one husband hi olivia hello how are you we good how are you all is well with me so let's jump right into it what is financial independence and how does it come by now let me start by financial independence uh it is where one person is partially or fully uh relying on the other person for financial support. Mm-hmm. It is uh, a situation where one is not able to make any decision that involves finances or any other matter without seeking financial support from anyone else. When, when you cannot do anything apart from the help, without the help of anyone else. Okay. All right. I see. So given that you also, you are married and How does it cause marital distress on the other end? You know, it might even lead to issues with mental health problems and all of that. Uh, Basically, what I would say is that naturally, as much as we are married, as much as we are one, like what you said on the wedding day, they say the two have now become one. Mm -hmm. We are one in the spirit, but we are two separate individuals. You understand? After the wedding... It's not like we are going to move in one body. It's not like we are going to have uh, the same perspective. It's not like we are going to have uh, the same brain. So we are two separate individuals who are living in the same room with the same goal. What what is one now in, in in us is our targets in life, our goal, where we are heading to. We are now not moving in separate or different directions, but we are now facing one direction as two individuals who have agreed to take on a certain road together. So when it comes to finances, definitely there are going to be differences in, in, in how we handle ourselves concerning finances. True. And uh, when we are talking now about independence and dependency, I think the distress comes in when one party decides to be dependent on the other. That's number one. Number two, when the other party is uh, well talked into being dependent, mm. you know, like we get married. Today we are deeply in love, everything is fine. And then the man promises uh, the wife, I'm going to take care of you, I'm going to take care of all all of your needs, I'm going to supply everything that you need. And you fall into that comfort and you you know everything is fine. And sometimes someone is married working and then they are told to give up their job because the man is now around and he will take care of everything. And because there is love there, it's it's still burning. The lady decides to lay off their work and be fully dependent at home. It will only be a matter of time before one starts seeing signals and starts experiencing some difficulties in the marital work. Mm. That's an interesting fact that you have mentioned there. So basically you are saying that this financial dependency, it's something that can actually start at an earlier stage, even way before the marriage itself. Exactly, exactly. How do you address that situation? When you look at the mental health aspect of it, how does it cause people distress within the marriage, that whole thing of being dependent on each other, looking forward to someone, you know, coming through for you financially? Because I see in most African societies, like you're mentioning now, it's a very common factor. We grew up knowing about it, that our mothers, they are housewives, they take care of the kids They don't bring any Mm -hmm. form of income. So how does Mm -hmm. it then affect the marriage when it's it's something that the people have agreed on, basically? Mm -hmm. You see, life is dynamic. We we agree on something today, tomorrow, because we are people, we change. And as we go on in life, our needs, they differ, they change. Our perceptions, they change. So, like I said earlier on, that we are two different beings who are staying together. I think I would want to say, under correction, it is not so very true that someone is able to supply all your needs. It's only God who can do that. Only God (laughs) who can satisfy all of your desires. (laughs) But uh, no no one can really satisfy your needs because needs, they they come as we go. 
Mm-hmm. Today I don't I don't I don't need makeup. Tomorrow I need it. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. Today I want short hair. Tomorrow I want Brazilian hair. Okay. So, so today is fine. Today our budget is fine because I'm just going for a, a 90 rand cut, and that's it. Tomorrow I need a Brazilian that is costing 1,000 rand. So the, already there is a shift in the budget. That shift is is not deliberate, but it's come as a change in my needs as I'm growing up, as I'm as I'm growing older. So the stress comes in when the other part that had vowed to take care of my needs is now not able to meet those needs because of other circumstances that are also coming about. And our prioritization definitely will differ. I'll prioritize my Brazilian hair and he's prioritizing his vehicle. Let me... have an imbalance. Okay, let me draw your attention to something. You are mentioning quite an interesting fact, Yane. But I, I'm, I've got an interest. I would want to understand. Is it the lack of finances that is an issue? Or is it the communication aspect when it comes to things like marital distress like we are speaking of? Is it the lack of actual you know, finances, the money being not enough for that particular moment in time? Or is it how we as a couple are now handling that lack of finances and how we are dealing with it at a later stage? I think it's a bit of both. Okay. It's a bit of both, yeah. Because, yes, finances might be there, my finances might not be there. But I think I would want us to focus more on the aspect of where the finance is actually there. Okay. Now, it, de- it depends from, from whose view the, uh, the, uh, is the availability of the funds. Because I might say the finances, the finances are available. <laughs> In my own perspective, mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. I look at the salary, then I'll say, okay, I think my Brazilian will fit there in that budget. But when the man looks at the, at the same salary, at the same, same, same ma- income that is coming, mm. it's not even enough. He's, he's looking at rentals, he's looking at uh, buying a stand, maybe he's looking at his siblings. He doesn't so, even see the Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's so a that it depends from what point of view. Yeah. So let's say now in a marriage, how then do I become financial independent? Is it even possible? To, First, to say I'm dependent on him, then now I'm like, okay, I want to have a Brazilian when I want a Brazilian. How and how do we even communicate it in a way that he doesn't feel as if I'm trying to take over or go over his head? Well, I think I was going to go to uh, point number two on the, this aspect that we've just touched now. It also depends where you, you, she was, you were asking about uh, the communication aspect. Yeah. That also factors in the upbringing, the background, where we are coming from. Uh-huh. Because it also depends on the teachings that are put in us as we are growing up. Like in our African society, we are told not to speak against the will of your, of your husband. We are, mm-hmm. we, are, we are told, when we are taught when we, when we get married, or when they pay the lobola, uh, we are told, go and obey your husband, go and respect your husband. Go and honor him. Don't go against his will. He's, you know that kind of thing. And, so, and yeah. Now, to come out of that situation, it is also dependent one on the one that is dependent. All right. Can uh, how much heat are they feeling for from the dependency? Because you you might be seeing the dependency from outside, but the one who is dependent can also come to a, to a point where they are comfortable with the dependency. That when you try and alert them that, hey, can you, can you not see that your dependency is actually affecting your health or affecting you emotionally? They are not able to notice it. And at the same time, are they brave enough to jump out of it? Because now when you are married and you are de- fully dependent on your husband for income, that will take the man also, his willingness to get you out of that situation. Because remember, financial capacity is also power. Yes. Okay. yes. So it will depend on, on the man wanting to give up his power and his authority. Because at some point, when they are used to control and power, they will feel they are losing a grip on, mm-hmm. the, on, on the wife mm-hmm. when they become financially independent. So it will, it, 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 it will take a lot of factors for us to come to a point where we say now a woman is independent but married. Mm. So... Is it control? possible? <laughs> is it possible to be financially independent? It is. It is very possible. It is very possible. It will take guts. 
it will take a courage. It it will also you have to be mixed with respect. Yes. And love. And communication. You know, sometimes we are not as privileged enough to come from backgrounds where you can easily get that independence. When we look at some of the families where we come from, there's deprivation, there's poverty. And then, I mean, I'm a girl who's raised in such kind of a platform. I don't have as many privileges. And automatically, the concept behind that is that I get my independence in marriage. Mm -hmm. my financial independence in marriage. And then I get married, I go along with this guy who's got his own things and all that. Is it wrong to see that as my financial independence? (laughs) To see my Uh, partner as my form of the independence? (laughs) For a while it is. For a while it is. But at some point in the journey, it is you will want to be independent at some point. That's why you find a lot of married women now, they go behind their husband's backs to supply <laughs> whether it is to their siblings, to their parents, mm-hmm. and, you know, their own personal upkeep. They end up with hidden spending <laughs> because of that. So at some point, you cannot rely 100% on another human being. It's interesting that you actually brought that up because I was going there. What happens now? Let's say I am a breadwinner or something like you know. In black communities, we have this thing that we call black texting. When uh-huh. my sibling wants to go to school, the roof is kept in. They just call you the roof, the school, the shoe, and like they all depend on you. Yet where now you are dependent on someone. How do you move about without? Breaking down. Uh, to begin with, it's so wrong to be dependent on a dependent. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's your parent. It's it's really hard to say no or I can't or I will see. It it's it's parent, a matter yeah. of a must. Look what's happening nowadays. People are becoming more conscious of things like global learning. And they are starting Uh to see that as a form of exploitation. But these people, Uh they are desperate times call for desperate desperate measures. You understand? Uh They see that as their leeway towards, you know, financial independence. If our daughter Uh marries off to someone who's got steady financial background, then automatically Uh what Pinky is talking about, the black texting comes into the picture. Now we have, Uh it's like we have, we have wind off this child and then mm-hmm. now they have to take up the role of looking back to where they come mm-hmm. from and saving the situation where they come back mm-hmm. from. So that mm-hmm. concept of you can't be dependent on, like you said, on a dependent, mm-hmm. it means mm-hmm. automatically to us, it doesn't apply. <laughs> no. You can't tell your siblings no. You can't tell mm. family no. How do we keep that balance? Because to them, it's, it's it's more of an investment. You being without person is, is an investment for them. So it's mm. like, ah, ah, but your husband works. Why? <laughs> why? why? Mm. He's driving. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> parents are doing it that way and that motive. Mm. This is actually more than slavery. Because what you're simply doing, you're selling your child to go and work for you in that man's house. Which is totally wrong. Because when we are marrying, we are marrying for the sake of love, for the sake of companionship. So if there is any other motive apart from love and companionship, then it's totally wrong. You are only making your, your daughter suffer for the rest of their lives. Because they'll be, they'll be a slave to that man. But rather, uh, I, I would encourage them to, to empower their own, their own uh, daughter, to empower their own kids. And as much as they are empowering them, we are not saying... Women should be empowered so that they can they can be above their husband. No, that is wrong also. But yeah. uh, when we are, when we are empowering our young child, we are saying stand up, stand up, and be on your own two feet. All right. So you me, that even the moment that the husband dies, what is what is going to be true, of your life? True. That's very true. But then me as the girl child, how do I tell now the family that no, I, I can't send you money or no, I can't I can't provide for this you now without being rude or coming across as if I'm being stingy with my money. <laughs> it's a it's a bit tricky because we are coming from, from different backgrounds. I would rather teach you how to, fish. to catch the fish. Yeah. 
I would, I would rather do that if, if you have uh, siblings, if you have, well, well, with a parent, it's a different story altogether. That's what I believe. With a parent, it's a different story altogether. You, you cannot teach your parent how to fish. Like I was saying, how do you depend on a dependent? But I would think that the husband, if he's loving enough, he has to empower his wife first. We have had couples where the husband is now a PhD holder and is in the same house with a wife who doesn't even have all levels, mm, mm, who doesn't even mm. have matric, who doesn't even have grade 10. So <laughs> to me, I, I start to question such, such, such a relationship. It brings us to power. Love to the extent that you, there is so much, uh, so much of a gap between you and your wife. Because if, if there is love involved there, then lift up your partner, empower them, encourage them to go to school, encourage them to get some course, encourage them to be independent. That is love. But if love, yeah. if love is all about, I'll provide for you, I'll do everything for you, that is not love. It's control. That is actually creating in someone's life. Yeah. yeah. You know, thank you so much for mentioning the point of the, the mixed conception that people have on we are marrying our child away, so they should give back and all that. Ne? But yeah. we have come to realize that nowadays in the societies that we are in, you find that um, girl children, they are somehow starting to be more independent. Can you mm-hmm. also help us to clarify some of the misconceptions or the, you know, the wrong views that people can hold against that? Because imagine now it's the wife who's more financially independent. And the guy has black texting it, 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 it is household. How is that mm-hmm. scenario going to be? Are we going to hold the same view that you are sharing now for the female child to empower the other person and all that? Or what? How do we clarify that? Because I see society as a tendency of limiting women. You cannot be doing so much for a man. Yeah. You cannot do this and that for his family. It's too much. This and that, ne, they've got these views that are just some, somehow negative and, and unbecoming. So how do we bring people back to the balance to say, look, anyone can be financially independent in the relationship. It can be the wife. It can be the husband. It doesn't mean if the wife is the one independent, then she's going to be more powerful than the husband. And it doesn't mean if she's more independent, then the husband is going to use her. Can we, can we help us clarify those? Well, I think I'll start by saying mm. it depends what caused the, the dependency to come to come about. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like in the scenario that you are just highlighting now of a man being the one who is dependent on the wife. The issue really is why is the man dependent? If it is because of laziness, there is nothing that you can do that that that, that man will be dependent for the rest of his life. If it is a woman who is lazy, they will be dependent for the rest of their life. Now, uh, it becomes much of a problem when the one who is dependent upon wants to free you, but you don't want to be free. Mm, mm, mm. A little sleep, a little sleep, a little slumber. (laughs) Yes. What I know of most women who 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 have been empowered, who are having dependent uh, men, Mm. Uh, they really would want uh, to win off their husband so that their husbands can stand on their own and be their own men and also be able to lead the family financially, emotionally, physically and everything. But the challenge only comes in when the man is comfortable enough with you providing for him. Then there, there comes a challenge. There's mm-hmm. one thing that I've noticed. Most people have a tendency of drawing this thing of poverty or financial difficulties to either spiritually related instances, mm-hmm. would you mm-hmm. say that's their way of coping? Like, or, you know, something like that. <laughs> or okay, maybe okay. they can say, you know, some generational cases, poverty, this and that. Can you say that mm-hmm. is actually a factor or is it people's way of coping with the reality that they are failing? Uh, well, we can't, we can't uh, run away from, from the spiritual matters because we are spirit beings. We are a spirit that lives inside the body with a soul. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> we can't really rule out the issue of spirituality. But at the same time, I want to believe that 
as long as there is some courage in someone, you should be able to stand up and face your demons. But at some point, you 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 can notice you can you can notice a trend. But such kind of things normally you can trace them through the generations. Yeah. Maybe it was your father's father, then your father, then it is you who are in the same same track. So when you really have such things, stand up and do something. Stand up and pray. Stand up and get delivered. Stand up. Stand up and fight. How can I then practice financial independence without compromising the value of the marriage? There is a thin line between your independence and disrespect. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bring it on. <laughs> I like the emphasis on disrespect. <laughs> It's a very thin line, more like a membrane. Okay, very thin. Yeah. <laughs> respect is only respect when the one that you are giving the respect classifies it and appreciates it as respect. As respect. Yeah. So if I come to you and I kneel down to wash your hands, but yet it's it's not part of your culture. You you. You you will take it as, as 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 if I'm I'm now going into slavery. So instead of interpreting it as as as, as respect, you're already seeing like okay this 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 lady what what is she trying to do? So respect is only respect when it is interpreted as respect to the one whom you're giving it to. The respect to mm. yeah. So it's the same with independence. Mm. The one who is financially independent cannot stand up and say I'm independent but I respect my husband. Mm. It is only the husband who can qualify the respect and say, my wife is independent, but she's respectful. But generally, in our African culture, it's very difficult. Mm. Because I, want, I, want, I also want to make independent decisions. Mm. When, I, when, when the income is here, I, I, I list also my needs. He also lists his needs. We put the, the money together in, in the same pool. Then we make our decisions. But mm. we are having scenarios where sometimes the, the wife is working. She brings home every single cent mm. on the table. Mm. The man grabs everything and decides what he's going to do with the money that has come into the house. Mm. So is the head. Really, in, 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 in such a case, at some point, the wife has to stand up and fight. They'll end up fighting. They'll, they'll end up, if they cannot fight, then they just bottle up and then they get into their own cave. Big time is now starts eating them up because they cannot speak up. Which, which actually brings to the issue of mental health effects on, yes. on women yes. regarding yes. finances. Yeah. Yes. So, so finances can actually lead to violence within a household. <laughs> Domestic violence, basically, you're saying. And also, uh, it can have uh-huh. maybe like an impact on someone's esteem. Imagine if it's the yes. husband who has to have to deal with being financially dependent on the wife and yeah. it can also bring about maybe things like depression now you are struggling to figure out how can i support my immediate other mm-hmm. my family members and yeah. in this under such circumstances where i don't have the total and absolute power and control over the finances and also sometimes mm-hmm. people struggle to define boundaries it becomes mm-hmm. difficult to you know to draw those lines with either family, mm-hmm. with either their significant other or other external mm-hmm. members on how to manage mm-hmm. their finances. So finances, yeah. are, they, quite, they have quite an influence on people's mental mm-hmm. functioning. But let me br- draw your attention to something very important. I know as a line of discussion, our main focus has been on the marital aspect of it. But I'm mm-hmm. single. <laughs> I'm single, but not searching, of course. (laughs) But I would want to draw your attention to people like us. Let's say I am single. Let's say I am a mother, but I'm not married. Mm -hmm. I'm not committed for whatever reason. Maybe it was a divorce. I'm widowed or something. Mm -hmm. Or just me Mm -hmm. in strange relationships with your significant other. How would Mm -hmm. you define financial independence and financial dis- dependency within such perspectives. When you are a mother, you know you've got your children. If your partner were to be out of the picture, 
how would you then define you know financial dependency and independence within such a setup and how would you help someone come out of you know the financial distress that comes with having to go through such well i think uh, the first and foremost uh, step that someone has to take in life mm. is a shift in the mind there has to be a paradigm shift where you tell yourself i'm i'm, I'm my own person stand on my own yes i need i need advice i need uh, support from other people but i should not depend on anybody else besides myself so when when your mind is shifted like that you will find that as much as you are single nicole mm. when you are entering into a relationship mm. make it clear to your partner before you engage in in the the, the vows mm. It should be very clear. It should be tabled very, very well. Your vision in in your life, your goals, your your career goals, uh, where you are heading to, what what your your focus is all about, what are your ambitions and everything. Make it very clear so that when you are entering into marriage, what that's the mistake that a lot of girls are doing. They are all for I'm I'm gonna be yours. Everything that's mine is gonna be yours. Mm, <laughs> heaven and earth. <laughs> At the end of the day, you are putting yourself in a position where you will not be able to come out. Of. Yes. So be very true. open, be very frank. I know of people who have been told while they were still in courting, and they were told that uh, when when I marry you, I don't want a a a working wife. Yes. You. So from yes. From that point, is, is be very clear, be very open, be very honest. If you don't want a working wife, can we just part ways now? Yes. Otherwise, I'm not, I am not, I'm, not, I'm not going to be dependent on you for the rest of my life. I love you very much, but I, I don't love you enough to live my life for you. So basically what you're saying is that even for the widowed, the single mothers and all that, the shift in your narrative, your mindset mm-hmm. of yeah, the, the situation that you are in is the one that's going to give you the financial independence that you deserve. Yes, because for what I know, mm-hmm. people are willing to help when you have a vision, when you focus. I've always said to the widow and the divorcees, if you want me to help you, bring your vision to the table. Okay. Where are you heading? What do you want to do? What is your plan? What do you want to do? What is your vision? What is your dream all about? Because if I if if you if I come and I give you money to buy bread tomorrow, you need another loaf of bread. Mm. <laughs> give me so much fun. You give me a finger today, tomorrow I'll come for the thumb and then the, the arm. <laughs> you have introduced me as someone who is into accounting and into auditing uh, and stuff like that. If my husband is to die today, I will mourn him because I'll miss my partner, I'll miss my friend, I'll miss companionship. But mm. I will not so much uh, be, be, be mourning uh, because I don't know where to start. Mm. 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 I, I have somewhere to start from. I have my certificate. Right now, if I tell you I'm, I'm not employed right now, I, when I relocated to, to come and stay with my husband, I had to give up my job. And why I gave up my job is because I had seen how he had catered for us while we were staying apart. Now I realized, okay, fine. I think I can give up my job for this guy because... So far, he has been good. And, mm. and so far, I, I, I don't have any regret. It's, it's only that I'm not employed because I don't want to be employed or he is forcing me not to be employed. But I'm, in, I'm unemployed because of the situation of the place that we are staying in right now. Mm. But uh, if, if, if a job comes by and he's, he's, he, when he gets uh, some vacancies, he comes with them to me because he knows very well. My, my wife is at home right now, but she's very independent. She has an independent mind. She's not a kept woman. She will want to go back to work and work for us. But when I'm working, I'm not working for myself. I'm working for the husband and the kids. True. So there is nothing wrong in us working, working together. Is there a possibility that there are things like impulsivity and living in the moment that can actually have an impact on future decisions of a person financially? They mm-hmm. live in the moment and they forget about the future. Mm-hmm. Is there okay. a possibility that people can actually work at preserving the little that they have in the moment, particularly on the side of savings that you can advise people on 
so that when when the dark days come, you've got a shade to run to. The thing is, when you're talking about saving, mm. whose money are you saving? Because uh, uh, you can only save when you have access to the money and you, you have been given access to, okay. to the finances. But we, we are having so many marriages in this day and age where the husband is running the, the show 100%. Okay. In cases where a wife is given access to the finances and you sit down and you discuss together, yes, you can be able to, to set uh, percentages and, and say roughly like uh, 50% is for essentials and 30% is for non-essentials and 20% is for the savings. Mm. Then you play around with the non-essentials. So how much do we want to save, uh, roughly? Or if you want to increase your, your savings, then you, you decrease your non-essentials. But essentials, there's nothing that you can do. Rentals are rentals. Food mm. is food. And then just, in, it, it has to come to the table. In a case that it's, it's a single parent or it's a single person, then mm-hmm. I am financially independent, but then I live mm-hmm. in the moment. I for today, <laughs> then Brazilian yes, clothing, yes, I, lifestyle, oh, okay. yes, then savings, okay. how do they come to play? Well, I think I, I would want to come again to the aspect of percentages. There, there is nothing wrong in, in, in enjoying uh, your sweat, but at the same time, tomorrow is coming, and tomorrow will definitely come. <laughs> so, so whether you are prepared or not, tomorrow is coming. I would advise, especially if, uh, to the single parents, make savings. It's unfortunate that uh, some of, of our African economies, you save today, tomorrow, mm. on, like yeah. if you look at the, the scenario of Zimbabwe, yeah. you, you, you save and save today, tomorrow, mm, it's it's gone. Yeah. And it all turns into a new currency and you have nothing there. But uh, despite all that, there has to be some savings. There has to be, there has to be something that you are doing in preparation for tomorrow, for the sake of your children, for the sake of the next generation, so that tomorrow you don't, you don't have any regrets and you, do, you are not bitter at, at anybody. Mm. Because if you come tomorrow to me as your sister or as your auntie, uh, you, uh, and you know these days with this social media, mm. a lot of people, they are not even uh, <laughs> secretive. They, they, they post whatever is happening on that day on, on status. And we can see, okay, this one is sitting pretty, this one is living the life. And tomorrow then you are running back to us and you are asking for, 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 for assistance. And you're like, but what happened yesterday? You were, you were the person, you were the, <laughs> the real deal. So we, we also have to be careful how we do our spending, how we, how we, we, we connect with, with mm-hmm. the outside mm-hmm. world. Right. No, that's that's very true, and I'm really enlightened. I'm very thankful that we actually had you on the show today, and I'm sure everyone out there is having the same sentiments as I'm having. Where should people with financial debt go to for help? You know, before we think of loan sharks. Before I talk about where they can go to, I would want to discourage uh, engaging in debt at all costs. Have as little debt as possible. Okay. What only, is the reasonable only, debt? <laughs> yes. What's the reasonable only when, only when it's necessary. But if you look if you look at us generally, we love to spend more than we earn. That's mm. true. <laughs> That's very our important. Our is always above our income. Mm, mm. So and, and and if you look at the expenditure, it's it's all about impressions out there. Yes. Mm. Did you clarify the percentages for that? For how the much we should, we should spend and and maybe just a like something that can help someone as a guidance, particularly. Yes, I was saying fifty percent is for the essentials. When you have your income, fifty percent should go to the essentials. Okay. That's a fuel. The and and the, the fuel also falls on on two categories: essential and non-essential. They are non-essential movements. That one, that one does. <laughs> we are living in the twenty-first century. <laughs> I want to take a road trip. <laughs> so, you, you also have got to sit down and ask yourself, okay, this trip that I'm driving right now of thirty kilometers to and thirty kilometers back, uh, is is it very important? Can I can I do without it, or I, I can't do? You know, 
so you you've got to ask yourself okay uh now i'm driving uh, to to such and such house if if it is so important can i leave my car and jump into a taxi or a car train and, and go and do my visit and come back so yeah. you know when we are looking at rentals when it comes to rentals also you, are you staying in a place that you can afford sometimes you know yeah. nowadays because of this technology i find it myself i find it very hard Sometimes the reason mm-hmm. why I struggle with my finances at the end of the day is because of the swiping machines. They just make mm-hmm. life so hard because when I get into a certain place, I swipe. I don't really see the impact in the uh, amount of you money I spent for that particular day. <laughs> and then when I'm sitting mm-hmm. down, I'm thinking, I, I've just spent so much at the end of the day. What would you say to mm-hmm. someone to just help them with that aspect of the impulsivity when it comes to spending, how do you draw the boundaries and the lines so that you can keep and maintain your financial independence at the end of the day? Okay. Uh, I think you, you, you highlighted a very interesting aspect of swiping. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I also have the same weakness. <laughs> and I realized that a loaf is going for 10, 10 rand. Now, if you take your card to go and buy a loaf, you don't I'm going to come difference. out of that shop with a, with a two liter of juice, yes. with um, a packet of snacks, <laughs> with a donut, with a chocolate, with yeah. some cookies. Yes. At the end of the day, you have swiped for 100 grand. Mm. So I've disciplined myself to the extent of withdrawing cash. I withdraw cash, I put it in my wardrobe or I put it in my wallet, whatever. But when I want to go and buy a single item, if it is a loaf of of, of ten dollars, I take the ten dollars and, and I go out with and the I ten dollars. Thank you so much, Olivia. We really had a blast. This topic we needed to talk about yeah. more, way more. But thank you for trying to break everything down that we were having in mind at the stage. Yeah, it was a pleasure. It was very enlightening. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank right. you so much. Bye. There are certain things that I learned out of this that I'm going to walk away with. Change of mindset. Yes. The mind is the control center of how a person engages, how a person manages situations at the end of the day. So if we don't change our mindsets in terms of how we approach the issues of finance, then we will become our own prisoners for the rest of our lives. She mentioned planning and budgeting, Mm -hmm. the importance of doing that. Because there are certain things that you can't pray your way out. You can't pray finances out Mm -hmm. and expect everything to just be fine at the end of the day. You need to plan as a person. You need to have a budget. Social influences. Sometimes we do things for the lifestyle, for people to see what Mm -hmm. we are doing, Mm -hmm. what we are about, Mm -hmm. to create a status for ourselves. But we are are only digging our own graves at the end of the day. And the other thing that I'm going to walk away with is... Don't borrow. <laughs> stick to <laughs> stick to your level. Mm. Maintain it. What stick you in your have. lane. Mm. Exactly. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. <laughs> Keep at your level. Yeah. Okay? If there is something that you want, <laughs> you're like, okay, go write it down. Next month, I'm budgeting for this. Exactly. Impulsive buying is, is very real, and mm. we do that a lot. So sometimes, you also mentioned something very important, that we don't marry our children like they are, mm, we are employing like, them to someone so that they can take care of us investments. at the end of the day. Ne? Sometimes families do not really know where to draw lines. Yes. And it's okay to say no sometimes. When you can't manage, it's, if it's not within your ability, within then your reach, draw the boundaries and maintain your mental well-being at the end of I the day. And the mo- far and foremost important point that she mentioned for today was we help each other through empowering each other. If you see someone who's in a financially dependent situation, then it's now on me to help them, to aid them towards a direction where they can make themselves independent mm. eventually. And I'm thinking that maybe there are actually counselors or institutes out there that actually deals mm. with this. And I yeah. also want to add that we're not saying uh, being financial dependent is wrong. No. If you're comfortable in your comfortability, if it's working, it's working. If you want to break out and be financially independent, then believe in yourself. 
have faith in yourself. Mm -hmm. Be surrounded that people that actually uplift you. Mm -hmm. And if the situation leads to abuse emotionally, physically, and all that, I suggest you walk away. Mm -hmm. you, your life is more precious and important than these finances. Exactly. We have people that are staying in very abusive relationships mm -hmm. because they feel like there's no way out. She mentioned an important thing that she, other ladies that she was actually giving guidance. So if you're out there and you need that help, you're feeling like, I'm stuck, this is it, this is the end of it. Sometimes people come to suicidal thoughts mm -hmm. because of financial mm -hmm. distress. So if you are out there and you really need that help financially, if it's something within a reach and their capability, she's welcome to help you. Just email us on Nicole at reeladloud.co.za. And I'm very thankful for such platforms that we actually get to speak about things like this. For more on our episodes on these relatable conversations, powerful and empowering messages, and access to these discussions on actionable tips, please check us on our website www.relatloud.co.za or other podcast platforms such as Google Play, iTunes and many other. Our episodes are also accessible on social media platforms indicated on our website and our YouTube page. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and invite others to our webpage. Ciao!